Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Coming to you on Thursday, July the 21st. The year's 2022. Let's talk trading. Setting your limits, part four, with Walmart. As always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart's. Walmart, speaking about limits, how did you uh, like that news action just now? Yeah, it's funny that you say that. Yeah, I mean, we saw that they, they drove the price down before uh, the pound. We're talking about the pound dollar here. But they drove the price down, you know, right before the news came out, only to go and run it up, you know, and... You know, that's just one of the things, and, and, and I was just talking to you about this, T.R.O., you know, a lot of retailers don't know this, but a lot of times what these big institutions will do is right before a big, you know, announcement of news, a lot of these guys aren't supposed to know what the news is, but a lot of times, somehow they, they do. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, so, <laughs> but at the same time, it just seems, why is it that all of a sudden, you know, before a big news event, price magically like one two three minutes before drives in the opposite direction of where they actually want the price to go or think the price is going to go you know and so they drove that price down what um, let me go look real quick it was at least 20 pips yeah they 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 actually flushed up and drove it down you know and you know and then the news came out and when that news came out it went up what 10 20 30 40 pips you know, <laughs> 50 pips now, you know, and it's just, uh, it's amazing how that happens every time, you know, and so as retailers, you know, we need to know that, that that's the game that they play, you know, and, you know, I talked about yesterday, you know, the whole idea that you, you got to know the game that you're playing and that's how you set your limits. Well, for me, there, there are ways that people make money off of that, knowing that but when you should, when you can recognize those things happening, you know, like I think, uh, Tiara, you even talked about that a little bit before when that was happening. You, you said, this is what they're doing. I can see it, you know, and you were absolutely right. And I saw the same thing. So once you get a little bit of experience behind you, you can see that and do it and maybe make some money off of it. You know, I, on the other hand, I set a limit. And I just say, you know what, two, three minutes before a big news event, I just don't. In fact, uh, I said, I think I said to you, uh, my hand, my hand is no, nowhere near the clicker, you know, and cause I wasn't, and that was about 15 minutes before, 20 minutes before. It's like, I'm not gonna, I don't care how good the trade setup looks like. I'm just not going to take it because I, I don't like playing that in that environment. I know that's my limit and I'm not going to go and do it, you know, and you know, and that's that's part of knowing who you are, knowing is you know, and knowing it what your limits are, what you're good at, what you're not so good at. You know, and why do I have that that rule in place or that limit in place? Because I've gotten burned too many times. You know, uh, I can't get out quick enough, and you know, yeah, I, I see it. I could have gotten in, could have made a bunch of money on the, you know, well, money on the table anyway. And by the time I go to click to get out, it's already too late and I've lost it, and maybe even taking a loss or a big loss. So it's like, you know, I'm just not going to play that game. That's my limit. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what say you? <laughs> well, um, as you were talking, I was flashing through the charts and there was just, there's so many things that, you know, the setup to me was obvious because uh, right now I'm looking at the ATR um, zone. And price definitely hit the ATR zone. It put in a daily low. It had come through the um, lower wick zone. Let's see. Go back to where was that screen? The lower wick zone, um, right there before the news. Um, it, it was just a, to me. It was just like a huge. It was just screaming. It's just like, you know, when it dropped through the 40, which I call the launch pad. And then it dropped down and it hit 25. And then it dropped below 25. It's like, um, okay, somebody's clearing out a bunch of stops or somebody's loading up because this thing's going to go up. And sure enough, and I, and I pretty much, um, you know, put my money where my mouth is because I was in some trades. And then I set my TP right below the launch pad because I know sometimes it'll come up, hit that 40, and go back down. It's like, okay, I wanted to clear, you know, clear my trades, take the money off the table, and then uh, jump back in a couple of times, which I didn't. Right before uh, or doing this video, 
um, I was long at I think 43 and then I punched out just so I don't have to worry about trades open while I'm doing the video and you then after you go yeah it's going to 60 and now it's sitting at 75 <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's clearly obvious what it, what it, when you have enough experience, it's pretty clearly obvious what it's going to do. In fact, you had texted me yesterday afternoon about something about price going somewhere. I don't even remember, remember what it was, but I had called where it was going to go. Yeah, 60. Know, um, <laughs> yeah, in, in the other direction, actually. But, uh, and then I, all I said, I said, <laughs> I sent back a text message to you. It was two words. Do you recall those two words? Yeah, something about it's, it's predictable or so predictable. Yeah, so, so predictable. Okay, and, and that's the thing. That's what experience goes and teaches you because you can see what it's going to do. And it, again, that just comes down to seat time. You know, I talk about that all the time, but it's a reality. Just seat time. You got to sit there and you can watch it. You can see it. You know, and you know, and that's what makes you you know, a better trader because with that seat time and that predictability that's there, you can take that and, you know, really go and take advantage of that. Now, you know, somebody's going to say, well, what's the, what's the magic thing that you're looking at? You know, and the, the reality is it's a, it's, it's a compilation of a bunch of things all at the same time that you're able to, your brain is able to put, wrap its arms around and say, yeah, this is where it's most, not where it's going to go, but most likely it's going to go. And, you know, and I like to go and think that I'm usually right at least 75% of the time, 80% of the time. And so you can go and take advantage of that. That, you know, see, again, we're talking about limits here. Well, that's something I'm pretty good at. So I'm going to go and use that. That's a limit that's in my favor. You know, and so I'll go and do that and use that to my advantage. You know, other folks, on the other hand, that may not be. And maybe this news thing is something that's to their advantage. You know, it's it's it, each and every one of us are individuals and we have to take advantage of what we're good at. Yeah, in fact, I just popped over to the dollar yen because it actually went above uh, 3880. Um, and remember earlier <laughs> I had said I had seen it. And I was saying, I'm kicking myself for not being short at 38.75. You know, I just decided to kick myself again. <laughs> yeah. And, and just, uh, just for uh, so some of the folks uh, watching this video understand what news we're talking about, because we're talking about the pound dollar. And the news that came out was actually concerning the euro dollar. And the news that came out was at 8.15 Eastern time. Um, Eastern U.S. time. So just in case you're looking back and say, well, there's no news there. What, what are you talking about? Well, that's that's the news we're talking about. And yes, even though, you know, that we're talking about the pound dollar, the euro news sometimes, not all the time, most of the time, in fact, not, but sometimes it will go and do this. And the reason why I put, I put the, I usually don't have the euro news up on my, uh, up on my screen. But the reason why I put it up there was, in fact, I think I told you, Tierra, that I'm putting it up there was because it was a rate change. And rate changes are huge. And they're going, you know, they're going to affect anybody that trades against the euro. They're going to go in and affect the other, the other currency. So that's why I put that up there. So, you know, again, that's, I know that's a little, it seems obvious, but it's something that we as newbies sometimes don't go and, Go, don't go and take into consideration. So, you know, look, you know, look at, at, you know, what I tend to do is I go in at the beginning of the week, I look at all the news for, for the entire week and all the, all the affected, uh, you know, pairs and all the affected currencies. And then I just put up the pound dollar and just know, Hey, on Wednesday, remember you got, I wrote on a little note card right in front of me. I wrote a note card and said, you know, remember Wednesday that the euro, they're going to go and then the ECB is going to come out with their rate stuff. So I threw that up on the screen because I knew there was a good chance that this was going to move the uh, move the pound dollar as well. Right. And I just put the uh, rat zone back up because you can see price entered the rat zone. It's just now coming back out. And we got this huge return bar here. So, you know, anything can happen. But... You know, we talk about, or you were talking about seat time experience, you know, thousands of hours in front of the screens um, and, and kind of knowing what it's going to do. But the thing is, it could do anything, you know, anything could happen. So and that's why we have our stop loss and our risk management uh, just to keep us, 
um, from blowing up because this is a type of event that could blow, blow you up if you guess wrong. That's exactly right. And that's, that's, you know, and for me, that's the reason why I just don't trade it. You know, I, I wait, you know, I don't trade going that, you know, my hard rule is two minutes prior to it, but reality is usually about 15 to 15 to 30 minutes. I just don't trade it. I just don't want to be in the, in the middle of that because I've gotten burned too many times. So I just don't do it. You know, and looking back at the chart, you look at the one minute chart right now. I mean, that looks like, well, man, that would have been easy as pie. Could have picked up 40, 50 dips there. Yeah. But what if you guessed the wrong direction? And you wouldn't be up 40 or 50 pips. You've been down 40 or 50 pips. Well, you know, unless you had stops put in place. Well, the thing is, when you say guess the direction, what that I think implies to, uh, at least to me, maybe a few of the other traders out there, is that you're you're placing your trade before the news comes out and you know basically hoping um that it's going to go in your direction as opposed to letting the news come out and then trading it because for me um what i did was i already had my trades ahead of time with my tp and then when i saw that next candle come down i went long again and I, I forget where I went long, but then it, it it took me down about 10 pips or so, and I wasn't really concerned because that very next candle came right back up. Um, but once again, that's just, uh, you know, f for, for trading this because this, when it moves like that, then it becomes a video game for me. And then it's just all reaction, no thought. Um, right. And it's just being able to, to punch in, punch out, punch in, punch out when you see those opportunities. And I think um, for me, it, it I work better like that because when it's moving slower, I've got more time to think about things and double think and triple think and overthink and analyze and look at, you know, 20 different multimeters. And it's, and then, you know, can sometimes tie myself in the knots as opposed to just saying, okay, I'm going to trade, you know, one single method or one or two horizontal lines and that be that. Yeah. And I think also what can very easily happen um, during those quote unquote slower times is that you can get bored. And the next thing you know, instead of paying attention to your chart, you're paying attention to some web page, right. you're paying attention to something on your desk you know, and you and miss your trade. Your <laughs> yeah, you miss you miss the trade. So I mean, we you just hit. The the, yeah, we just hit ninety on ninety one on my chart. Um, and so what my uh, gut's telling me is this thing wants to double low. Uh, we're yeah. thirteen pips above the open, which I believe was about seventy five. <laughs> I was looking at. Let's see which chart has a daily open on it. Yeah, 75. So we crossed the daily open. So, you know, that would have been a nice, you know, 10, 15 pip trade just taking the daily open cross. You yep. know, which is out of yeah. the, basically out of that wick zone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the great thing about it is that all these things work. They really do. They truly, truly do work. The thing is, you know, bringing it back to topic is that you need to go and set your limits appropriately and so that you take advantage of it. You know, just because, you know, you can look at the chart and observe, yeah, look at that. It does not like being in a wick zone. It doesn't like being a, it's going to come out one way or the other. It's either going to come out of the top, it's going to come out the bottom, but it's going to, it's going to come out of that wick zone one way or the other. But the thing is to take advantage of that, you need to go and sit there and figure out, you know exactly how you're going to play that. You need to have a game plan, and you got to have that game plan down so tight, you know, in your mind that when it occurs, you can take advantage of it and do exactly, execute exactly what you need to execute. Yeah, you know, and you, you know what? <laughs> We're going to have to execute uh, the fastest 15 minutes in trading because our time's just about up. 
So, fellow traders, I hope you glean something from today's talk on limits. And we'll probably, uh, we'll, we'll be talking more next week, that's for sure. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, I'll be doing the weekly wrap-up. So, just remember when you're sitting down at your trading terminal, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So, go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one, over and out.